Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial 11 of LTEC 620. In this tutorial, we're just going to focus on working with color in Affinity Designer. So to begin, I want to walk you through the process of importing the color palette from Moosley Colors into Affinity Designer. So let me show you the steps to do that. It's real easy to do. So you can see here I'm on the color palette generator and what I can do is select a color and then it shows me several different color harmonies that I can choose from and so I am actually going to let's do something I'll do this analogous one so I'm going to select that and I see this suite of colors here and what I want to do is download this palette so I'm going to go ahead and do that after the download completes if I go to it happens to be on my desktop I can see that this file is right here so what I'm going to do is switch over to affinity designer and what I'm going to do is come up to file and I'm going to click open and what I want to do, you can see here I'm on my desktop, I want to open that file I just downloaded, that scalable vector graphic file. So I'm going to go ahead and open that, and voila, it shows me this color palette. And you can see here, if we look at the layers, that it actually has all five colors, and the hexadecimal code for each of those colors is actually the name of the layer. So that's pretty handy. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the uh, Moosley layer here, and I'm actually going to delete that. We don't, we don't need that. Then what I'll do is I'm going to draw a box around this. So everything's selected, and then I'm going to come up to Edit, Copy. Now I'm going to switch back over to my design, and watch what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to paste this into my design. Boom, just like that. And if I look over into my layer studio, I can see now I have these five color layers in here that I can reference. Now what I want to do just to make it a little bit easier to move these around is I am actually going to right click and click group. And so now I can toggle the visibility of that whole group on and off. For right now, what I want to do is just move this off of my artboard so I can reference it when I need to. So let me go ahead and expand that. So the first thing that I want to do is apply one of these colors, it doesn't matter which one, to this dark background, this black background. So there's a couple of ways that I can do that. So I think I'll start by adding this purple color to the background. And it looks like if I look at the layers here that that's actually this one right here. So take a look at this code. It says number sign 8A 2B E2. So if I want to apply that color to my page background, there's a couple of ways I can do that. One way with the background selected would be to come up to fill, make sure you're on the color tab, switch to the RGB hex sliders, and then what you'll notice here is there is a spot to enter the hexadecimal code. And so I can go ahead and type that in, 8A to B E2, and hit enter, and it's gonna apply that purple. Now, one thing that I wanna show you is just look at the correspondence here. On the red slider, notice that the code is 8A. For the green slider, it's 2B, and for the blue slider, it's E2. And that's exactly how this hexadecimal code gets applied to the RGB. Now, let's say I actually changed my mind and I wanted to do something else and pick a different color. Well, what I, another way to apply a color is to select this and then come down here to the tools and grab the color picker. And with the color picker selected, what I can do is actually select whatever color I'm interested in applying. And automatically, voila, it's going to apply that color. Now the next thing that I want to show you is simply how can we manipulate these colors. And specifically, we've been reading about hue, saturation, and value. How can we manipulate, let's say, saturation and value in Affinity Designer? Well, it's actually really easy to do. So with an item selected, what I can do is drop down the fill menu and come to color. And let me show you a couple of things. So one of the sets of sliders that you can open up is this HSL. And HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness or luminosity. Now I'm going to leave the hue. Remember the hue is essentially what we think of as color. It's this purple. And it has a value of 271. 
the saturation level has a value of 76. Now watch what happens if I manipulate this. If I drag it to the right, my purple is getting more and more saturated. If I want to desaturate it, I can slide it to the left and notice I'm adding gray to it or I'm taking away that color and moving towards pure gray. So that's one way we to do that. Let me come back to 76. And now we can also do the same thing with the lightness or the luminosity. Right now it's 53, but I can drag it all the way to the right and make it pure white. Alternatively, I could drag it all the way to the left and I'm sh shading the color. I'm adding black to it. So if you start adding black, you're adding shade. If you start adding white, you're tinting. So let me undo that. I just hit Control Z or Command Z to undo those changes. Now let me show you a couple of other different views. Now one kind of handy view is the HSL color wheel. And notice again, we see hue, saturation, and lightness down here. And my hue is specified as color code 271. But what I can do now, if I move this up and down, if I move it up, I'm increasing the saturation. If I bring it down, I'm, I'm desaturating it. I'm moving towards gray. Alternatively, I can move left to right. If I move to the left, I'm moving, I'm adding black, I'm shading. Or I can move to the right to add white. Again, those are examples of how to manipulate saturation and lightness. Now, if you want to just focus on say saturation, you could choose the saturation and you're going to get this nice slider here, which would allow you to adjust that. You could also do the, the same thing if you want to focus on grayness or on tint. If you want to start adding white to the color, you can do that. Keeping in mind that the hue is still true to the color you initially put in there. Okay, let me just undo. Now, the last thing that I want to show you quickly is if you want to, you could experiment with gradients. So let me go ahead and turn off the visibility of most of this stuff so we can see this. So if you want to add a gradient, perhaps the easiest way is with your page background selected, come over to the gradient tool like this. With that selected, drop down, let's say you want to add a linear gradient. And here you go. And so you can, these are little handles you can move around. So let me put that up at the top, right at 500. And I'm going to drag this down so that the darker color is towards the bottom. Now, if I want to manipulate these colors, I can simply click here and I can do all kinds of things with this. I can select this bottom node and I actually want that to be pure black. What I can do is click there. And so I, I have this nice gradient gradient now from the purple at the top all the way down to pure black. I, I, that's actually too dark, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to come back to the original color and leave it there for a minute. Now, let's say we wanted to change the top of this. What I'll do is come up here, and I don't want swatches. I'm going to change the, the lightness, and I'm going to bring it. I'm going to add in some white like that, something like that. Okay, voila. Very good. Okay, everyone, we're out of time. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.